Hi my lovelies, I hope you're all well. So today we're going to make a shaker cake topper. It doesn't have to be a cake topper, but I'm gonna create a shaker. Now that Design Space has offset, this is so, so easy to do. So we're going to go to images and I'm just going to search for a rainbow. And you can do this with a single layer image or a multi-layer image. I'm going to choose a multi-layer image like this one and insert to canvas. And I'll also show you with a silhouette as well in a second. So first things first, I'm just gonna get rid of these two layers here. And then I'm going to ungroup this and I'm going to select everything but that base layer. So I'm gonna leave that base layer as it is. And I'm then gonna weld all of those together. So I'm left with just two layers. I'm then going to highlight and slice. And if we then move these out the way and get rid of that one, and then that one, you'll see we're left with an outline. So this outline is what I would then cut in either chipboard or I would do it hand cut with foam or if I didn't have a maker and a knife blade or I wasn't able to hand cut foam, I would actually just layer cardstock. And what this is creating is the recess area for our sequins and our glitter. So this is what all of your sparkles are going to sit inside of. Now I like to have two layers of chipboard and I also like to have two layers of foam and if I'm doing it in cardstock I sort of judge it by eye but I normally will do four layered together and then another four layered together as well. You need to make sure that you've got enough of a gap so that your sequins can move about. So you, the width of this, you want to make sure is great enough for your sequins and your glitter to be able to actually shake around. I want two of these because as I say, if I'm doing it in chipboard or foam, I will layer two together and then I will place my sequins inside. I also need something to encase my sequins. So I use acetate. So to do that, I'm going to duplicate this and let's just change the color. Let's go for a gray. And then I'm going to come down to my contour and I'm just going to hide all contours so that I'm left with a solid piece. And that is then my acetate that's going to sit on top of my chipboard or my foam or my layered cardstock to encase my sequins. Now I do two layers of acetate. I do one on the back of my structure. So let's send that to back. And I also do one on the front so that my sequins are fully encased. Now I may have cardstock on the back here, but I still like to do the acetate because I find that it makes my sequins and everything move around a lot better. But if you were gonna have cardstock on the back of here as a solid piece of cardstock, then it's an individual choice whether you want that acetate there as well. What my shape is, that is the basic structure. I've got my acetate, then I've got my chipboard, my foam or my layered cardstock. And then I personally have a layer of acetate on the back. So let's just move these over here. And we're gonna move that one over there as well. Now we also need to hide our chipboard, our foam, or our layered cardstock, because we don't want to see that. That's the bones of our shaker. We don't want to see that. So then we're gonna create a cardstock layer to hide all of this. So if I then go to offset again, and we can see our offset there, if I just select apply, and I can make it as thick or as thin as I want, if we just send that to front, that is then going to hide 
our chipboard, our foam, or our multi cardstock layers. So you're not going to see those. All you're going to see is the shine from the acetate and the sequins and glitter. I also want one of these for the back as well. So if I duplicate it, and again, let's just make that a different color. I can choose if I have this on the back, whether I want it to be like this. So you're going to see the shaker going all the way through or if I want the back to be solid. That is completely a personal preference. But if you want the color of the cardstock on the outside of the shaker at the back, you do need to make sure that you mirror or flip horizontally that piece. Because if you want the glitter to be at the back, then you're going to need to mirror that back piece of cardstock. So if we just look at this, at the back we've got our cardstock, which I've mirrored because I want the glitter of the cardstock on the outside. Then I've got my acetate so that I can encase my sequins and my glitter. I've then got either chipboard or foam, which is hand cut, or I've got layered cardstock, which is then glued together so that I can put my sprinkles and everything in there. And I've got my acetate to encase them from the front. And then I've got my front cardstock piece that's going to hide my chipboard, my foam, and all the rest of it. Once I've created that front piece, I can then do whatever I want to do with that. So for example, if I wanted to add some text into there, I can. So let's just move this slightly out the way. Let's go to text and let's just write happy birthday. And let's choose a nice cursive font. So let's go with Elizabeth. And there is a design space Elizabeth and there's also a installed Elizabeth as well. So let's look at the design space one. Yep, I like that. So I'm then going to go to advanced and ungroup to letters. And I'm going to make these so that they overlap. Once I've got them how I want them, I can weld that one together. And you'll see that sometimes when you weld, you end up with one or two of your letters being infilled. If you just go to undo, it's because they're overlapped just a tad too much and then weld them back together. I can also weld this one. I'm going to put them where I want them and I'm just going to highlight both, align and center horizontally so they are perfectly aligned. And then I'm going to create an offset for these. So if I then go to offset, I can create that first one and apply. And you'll see there is gaps in there. If I just change the color so you can see it a bit better. In that first offset, we've got some gaps. I can choose to either leave it like that so they're cut out or if I select that layer and go to contour, I can contour them out so it becomes solid, but it's a personal preference. I'm then going to make sure that that layer is selected and I'm going to create an offset of that one. And I can, of course, change the color on that. So I'm cutting it out in all different cardstock. And I can keep creating an offset of that previous layer if that's what I want to do. What I like to do is then just group it together so that it all stays together whilst I'm on this screen. What it won't do is if I go to make it, it won't keep them together, but I don't want them to anyway because they're separate layers. But it does mean because they're grouped on the canvas that I can move them around as one without having to worry about leaving anything behind. So I can then decide where I want that to go on the front of my shaker. And I can also make a decision. 
So I could either build this and then glue it on individually, or if I wanted to, I could say attach it there, ungroup it, and I could hide everything but that last offset, and then I could actually weld those two together so that it cut out as one piece. And then I could just layer those on top. But I personally would probably just stick it on there somewhere. Anywhere you like, it's completely up to you. But you can go really outrageous with this or you can keep it really, really simple. It's completely up to you. So I've got three different rainbows here. One I'm going to put together using chipboard. One I'm going to use foam, which is hand cut. And one I'm going to layer cardstock, just so you can see how it's all done. Just very quickly, if I go to images and we're just gonna get a dolphin and we're just gonna get a solid dolphin. If I want to create a cake topper using that shape, I can. All I'm going to do is create an offset first of all, and then I'm just going to slice those two layers, and that offset that I've created, which is now sliced, then becomes the bones of my shaker. So this would then be my chipboard, my foam, or my layered cardstock, and then to create my card to go over it so you didn't see it, I would just create another offset. So if we just make that blue and then arrange and center front, you can then see that that will hide everything that's going on in there. So you can do it with a multitude of shapes and images. So for this rainbow here, I've got my cardstock at the front. I've then got what's going to be either chipboard, foam or layered cardstock and I'm going to duplicate that. And with that duplicate, I'm going to make it solid so that it's my acetate. I can then duplicate that again so I've got two of them. And I'm going to duplicate that cardstock piece so that it can go on the back. And I'm just going to flip it horizontally so that I've got the color or the glitter facing outwards. I can do exactly the same with these as well. So with my chipboard, I'm using the Cricut Heavy Chipboard with the knife blade on my maker. So I would need to select Heavy Chipboard. With the foam, I'm going to just cut out a cardstock template and then I'm just going to cut out the foam using my True Control knife. And for one of the other ones, I'm just going to do layered cardstock. So we're going to do the chipboard first. I'm going to select heavy chipboard two millimeters and we know it's the Cricut one because it's got a C next to it. And I'm going to be using my knife blade in my maker. So you want to use a purple strong grip mat and you also want to air your chipboard for 24 hours as well. You want to make sure that your chipboard is right on the lines of your mat. You do not want it going over the 11 inch mark. If you've got a smaller piece of chipboard, you can place it anywhere on the mat but it must not go over that 11 inch area. That's because as you'll see in a minute, we have to move our star rollers across. So make sure that your chipboard does not go further than the 11 inch mark. You're also going to want to make sure that you mask all the way around. So you're taping your chipboard onto your mat. And you also want to come in with a brayer and just really make sure that both your chipboard and your masking tape are nice and secure to your mat. You do not want this moving around. You also do not want to leave this. Sometimes the chipboard will take the full amount of passes. Sometimes 
it will only take half and you do not want to walk away and find that this has lifted up because it will cause damage to your machine. You can also end up causing damage to your mat and cutting all the way through. So you must, must, must stay and watch when you're working with the knife blade. So it's doing naught of 24 passes. It's going to do the first pass and then it's going to tell me roughly how long it's going to take. I normally will check at about past 10 and then I check every two passes after that because once I get to about past 10, that's when I start to notice it will quite often be nearly or cut. So past 14 is about right for me, but I always start at about past 10 and just keep checking to make sure that it's not fully cut because then you can end up, as I say, either damaging your machine or damaging your mat. So I am on 15 of 24 passes. So I'm just going to pause this. And to check it, I normally get a weeding tool. And I just push down on my mat slightly and I can see there that that is cut. Now I can't tell at the top but I'm going to make an informed decision. That is definitely cut there so I may have to do a few um, little cuts with the true control knife to finish it off but that is something I'm willing to do rather than let it carry on too far. So I've paused it. If I was going to carry on cutting, I would just press my C again, but I am actually going to unload it. And you can see there that, apart from that little area there, is completely cut. So I'm just going to have to use my true control knife around there to finish it off, but that is done. That's my two pieces of chipboard cut out. So all I'm going to do is just glue those together that then gives me four mils of area for my sequins and my glitter to move about in easily. I'm going to go cut out the rest of the cardstock and my acetate. And I'm just gluing these together using my Nuvo clear drying adhesive. But any good glue will do, whether it be Nuvo or Cosmic Shimmer or our glitter glue, just a good glue will work but make sure you put it under something heavy so it's got time to really bond. So we're going to put together our chipboard one first and as you can see I've glued my two pieces of chipboard together. I've got my two pieces of acetate, I've got my back piece of cardstock and my front piece of cardstock. So first things first I'm going to do the back first and I'm just going to add some glue all over my chipboard. You then want to use either your finger or a brush just to sort of smooth that in because what you don't want to do is add your acetate and then have the glue spilling out so that you see it on your acetate. There's nothing worse than that happening. So just spread it out using your fingers and then you can add your acetate to it and turn it over and then I tend to put a heavy book on that for sort of 10 minutes just to let that acetate really stick to that chipboard. Once that's dry we can then add the cardstock to the back and again I'm going to do exactly the same thing. This time I'm going to add the glue to my acetate where my chipboard is and then I'm going to go through and just smooth it out. I can then add my cardstock onto there and then again I tend to put something heavy over that just to let it all kind of glue together. So now I can add my sprinkles in here. So I've got some Nuvo sequins and I've also got some Nuvo um, shapes, so circles, stars, hearts. If you're going to add some glitter into this, if you're going to do fine glitter, you only need a tiny, tiny amount because it will tend to stick to the acetate. Really, you want to use chunky glitter and you don't want to use too much of it. 
any glitter you want to use it sparsely in these because like I say it will stick to the acetate but if you've only got fine glitter you only need to add a tiny amount. Once I'm happy with the way that looks, I can then glue my other piece of acetate to my chipboard. And again, just use your finger just to smooth that out. Lastly, we can add our cardstock on top of that. And then again, we're gonna put that under something heavy so it can dry. So I've now cut out eight layers of a Cricut craft board and I will link to everything in the description below. Again, to glue these together, I'm just using some normal glue. And then I'm gonna place this under something heavy. So now we're gonna to put together our next one. And what I've done for this one is I've glued my two backing pieces together. So instead of using acetate on the back of this one, I've just done glitter cardstock on the back and an iridescent to hold my sequins. So this is my layers of craft card that I've put together. So there is eight layers of this. And again, I'm just gonna turn it over and add my glue. And again, I'm just gonna use my fingers to smooth that glue out so it doesn't spread out everywhere. And then again, I can put that under something heavy just to allow it to really adhere to that cardstock because we want this to be nice and stuck down so that our sequins and our glitter don't leak out. So now that's glued in place, I can add my sequins. So this time I'm gonna add some blue dust diamonds to my clouds. And just a few of the blue bell hearts. And then because I've got that nice iridescent behind here, I don't feel I need a lot of colour. So I'm going to use some diamond sequins. And also some snowstorm flakes as well. I can then glue my acetate in place and then add my glitter cardstock on top of that. And then again, I'm gonna put that under something heavy. So I've got some foam here. This is some rigid foam board and I've just created a stencil out of some cardstock, which I've then drawn around. And I'm just going to use my true control knife to cut this out. I'm probably going to do two of these, but I'm just going to use my true control to come in and cut this. So I've cut my foam out and I've decided actually that I just need the one, not the two. And it doesn't have to be perfect because of course our cardstock, when I place it properly, is going to hide it but there is definitely enough thickness in there for my sequins and glitter to move about in. So for this, I'm only gonna do the one. So this is my foam one, and I've already glued my foam to my cardstock. I've used a white glitter cardstock for the inside and a yellow glitter cardstock for the outside. Again, I can glue my acetate in place to keep those sprinkles as they are and then glue my cardstock on top of that. So while we're waiting for our rainbows to dry and get nice and secure, I'm gonna use one that I created earlier and I'm gonna turn it over and add my sticks. So I use clear plastic ones and what you can do is you can put them on the back and then if you want to layer another piece of cardstock, you can or you can just have them on the back. It's completely up to you whether you want them visible or not. So I'm gonna use a hot glue gun and I'm actually gonna glue onto the card to start with. And then I'm gonna place my stick 
into that glue. And then I'm just going to secure it in place by gluing the sides and the tip. And I'm going to place some glue actually over the stick as well. And this just really secures it in place. And as I say, if you want to then add some cardstock over this to hide it, that's completely up to you. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. I hope that this has been informative. I know we've gone through three different methods, but I think it's useful to know because quite often we will only concentrate on one. And then those that don't have, say, a maker or the knife blade feel that they can't create these and everyone can create these. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, give the video a thumbs up. If you've got any comments or questions, please do leave them below. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.